Hey everyone, Senior Client Manager Mel here with Solutions Eight. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, smaller clients who don't have the budget or the resources to have things like North Beam and Triple Whale, and how I manage their um, MER week over week. Um, I've created a spreadsheet that I'm going to share with y'all um, that just makes it really easy week over week to keep track of um, MER. I'm going to look at new customer MER as well. So we have lots of clients within Solutions Eight who have great LTV. Um, so we actually focus on new co customer acquisition because we know that um, the lifetime value of customers could be thousands of dollars. Um, so we really focus on pushing those new customers. So for a lot of clients, we do have new customer acquisition MER goals. Um, so we're gonna look at that for a client that I have. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to go over the spreadsheet and any kind of tips and tricks that I can think of along the way um, that help me when uh, when having goals like this on a smaller scale. Uh, so North Beam, Triple Whale, they lay it out really easily. You can easily see your um, new customer MER. You can easily see your overall MER. Um, but when you're doing it yourself manually, uh, it's not um, presented very pretty you have to do math and you have to store it somewhere. So uh, I developed the spreadsheet. Um, I'm sure there's lots of spreadsheets out there that you can use. Um, mine's not pretty. I'm not a, you know, Google Sheets master or anything, uh, but it does help me, gives me a visual, also helps my clients. My clients use these all the time. So I'm going to share that with you. Uh, so I guess we'll start here. Uh, so this is a spreadsheet. Don't make fun of my color coding. I like to color code things. <laughs> uh, so we've got here the date. So I usually look in seven day periods. You can look at 14 days. You can look at month over month. That's totally fine. You can kind of uh, choose how you want to, what time periods you want to look at. Um, so I put the date here. I add our Google ad spend. Um, if the client's running Facebook ads, we'll add the Facebook spend. And then if they have any other spend like Pinterest or Bing or any other uh, paid advertising, we'll put it here. And then it will automatically calculate in the spend total column. And then we have the online store revenue. So this is gonna change depending on if you're running, uh, if your goal is new customer MER or if it's just MER. So um, I have another spreadsheet I could have showed you, but I've got a new customer MER that we can look at as well. New customer MER. And I'll just show you the calculation on how that's different. Um, so yeah, this is the basics of the spreadsheet. Um, if there's other spends, you can obviously add different columns, um, but I find not a lot of our lower budget clients run too much other uh, paid uh, advertising. So I just didn't have a need to add it, but you can absolutely do that. Um, and starting from the basics, I guess, I'm not gonna go too much into what is MER. If you are here and you're watching this, I'm assuming you already know what MER is. Uh, John Akasam and the team have a lot of other videos on what MER is, why we track it. Um, so if you're wanting to start there, I would recommend checking out one of the other videos. Maybe we can link a couple uh, at the bottom of this one. Um, so I'm going to assume we all have the knowledge on what MER is, why we track it, all that good stuff. So um, having a look here, I'm just going to go through how I add in all this stuff from the client's uh, information into the spreadsheet, and then we'll look at it together. Um, so Google Ad Spend, obviously, we're going to look the last seven days. So we've got 893.29 here. So I'm going to add that here. They don't run uh, Facebook right now and they're not running anything else. So if they did, I would put, you know, a hundred, that seems very low. Let's just put like 500 for instance. And then if there were anything, anything else, like we put 900 there, it would automatically calculate in the spend total, but they don't run anything else. So it's just going to be that. And then online store revenue. So uh, for overall MER, you're just going to grab this from your analytics section. So last seven days, we're just going to grab this number here. And we're going to put it here. Okay, so you're going to see from Google Ads spend $893.29 to online store revenue, we have 11730 for the last seven days. We have a 13x, that's overall MER. Now, if we wanted to track new customer MER, what I would do differently here is I would say new customer revenue here. New customer revenue. 
and you're probably wondering how do I get that number. So let's have a look. Uh, something you probably heard John talk about quite a bit is the app by the numbers. So I use that every day. I love by the numbers. So we're going to look at why I love by the numbers when we're tracking NER. So if we head down here, we can see obviously uh, first time customers. So this week, this past seven days, we had nine first time customers, which is up 50%, which is awesome. So that's what we want to look at if we're looking for a new customer acquisition goal. Uh, by the numbers tells us uh, all of this information. And then what also I really like about it is this first time uh, versus returning customer sales. So for instance, we have uh, 1,400 new customer sales, uh, 10,000 from rec returning customer sales. So as this number grows month over month, this number is gonna grow month over month because if you think about it, um, so this clients, they do have a subscription model um, which is a lot more convenient for a lot of people think, um, you know, groceries that you need to buy month over month um, that you could just, for instance, automate. So once you find the brand that you like for this particular set of groceries, we'll call it groceries as an example, um, you're probably not, you're not very likely to change uh, just because how this particular um, industry is set up. Um, it's not exactly that example, but just to give you an idea. Um, so it's it's not uh, it's not convenient to change. Uh, so once you find something that you like, you're likely to stick with it. So that's the case for this customer here. So um, once this number starts growing, we're going to see this number start growing month over month as well. So if we take this number because we're looking at our first time versus returning customer sales. So this is our 1400 for from first time customers from these nine customers and our AOV on the first time customers is lower than our returning customers uh, just because you can, for instance, sample, you can get a sample pack of, let's call it again, this food service um, and just a try and then if you do like it then that's where the AOV increases um, and then month over month people do um, come back so let's grab that number so 140162 and we're actually going to use we're going to use that number here so 140162 let me just gonna... perfect all right so our new customer MER is 1.56 so John has lots of videos on this. I'm not going to talk too much about why it's okay to have a low new customer MER. So essentially what we want is to at least break even and anything over that is awesome. So if we at least want a one, anything over that is, we love it. Because we have such a, um, a high returning customer rate and the LTV is so high, we can afford to take a hit, a little bit of a hit at the beginning because we know we're going to make that up over time. But we still want to get a little bit of profit for the client just so that they're not going further into the hole. Um, we want to kind of, we want to make sure we're getting at least 1.5 to 1.8 is usually what we aim for. Uh, you can figure this math out. Um, for sure, looking at your uh, LTVs, uh, your repeat customer rate, all of that. Again, John has many videos on that. I'm not going to go into those calculations, but um, you'll just see how this spreadsheet works. So uh, your Google ad spend, uh, because our Google ads are new customer acquisition, so we have all we have a branded campaign. We don't spend much on it, and we bear, we don't um, push our branded campaign. This is more so for um, for placement. Um, so we don't spend a lot on the, those bottom of the funnel uh, warm terms. We really push our top um, top performing um, or sorry, top of funnel terms as much as possible so that we know um, that we're going as cold as we possibly can. So for instance, we had um, eight conversions. Yeah, in the last seven days, eight conversions here. And then we're tracking nine first time customers in, uh, in by the numbers. So uh, we can look at those individual uh, purchases and I do look at them and I make sure that in Shopify it's first time order so that we can kind of rectify those numbers. Um, but overall, those are some of the numbers that I look like, I look at. Uh, and then another report that I really like in Shopify is actually this customers down here. It is a cohort retention. Let's look at this. Yeah, this is a really good one. 
So um, it, it just gives a really good visual on, um, so for instance, we're looking at, let's look at October. So looking at this, so we're looking at October. So if we look at month two, so let's read what this is here. So 51.3% of customers that made their first purchase in October made at least one purchase in the second month. Uh, or November uh, for a total of 27 orders and 6,468 in total sales. Okay, that makes sense. So move my face here. Okay, so 33%, 33.3% of customers that made their first purchase in October made at least one purchase in the third month for a total of 16 orders. And okay, that makes sense. And then moving on to the third month here. So 7.7% .7 of customers made, that made their first purchase in October made at least one purchase in the third month for a total of three orders. So you'll see these are these are really great numbers. And this is what we kind of want to see here um, is these retention rates staying pretty high. And overall, this client's doing a great job here. Um, let's have a look the sales orders AOV. So it also gives you here, um, it's not, you know, going to be exactly accurate, but it gives you the Google ads data here as well. So it'll give you your cost here. Um, so let's say for instance, what month is that? That was November, December. So December, for instance, we spent uh, 5,356. And then if we look at total sales, um, so this is new customer. Uh, we did seven hundred or seven thousand eight hundred and thirteen. Yeah, this is going to be total sales of. Let me just check that. Let's go December. I'm pretty sure how that's how that works. Yep. Yeah. So that's new customer. So first time purchases. You'll see in December it's. Um, reporting 7,813 and then you can look at your spend there and that'll get that's your um, new customer MER calculation with your spend and how much you made. Um, so December is one of their slower months as you can see we had some really good months here. Um, December is one of their slower months as you can imagine people are uh, their spend is elsewhere right now uh, which is totally fine but uh, still did really great for the month and happy with those results. Um, so this is another report that I really like um, and then we can also look at first time versus returning sales. Again, this one just gives it in another way. So this one you can see, uh, last seven days, all sales, all customers. Yeah. So you'll see by day, uh, you'll see your first time customers versus your returning. Um, and then you'll see your AOV here, purchase frequency, value, uh, if there's any discounts, total sales. Uh, so it just lays, this is a really great report to lay it out really clearly for you uh, to see where your new, um, your new versus first time uh, customers, uh, sorry, your returning versus first time customers are uh, day by day. And you can look at a seven day period. You can look at 30 days. Once that loads, yeah, lots of data uh, that can really help you here. So that's another report that I really like. Um, you can also look at one in Shopify itself. If you go to reports, uh, first time versus returning customer sales. I like, I, tr I think I like this one better actually. If I go last 30 days, just because it groups it. Yeah, it groups it more like your all of your first time you'll see here and then all of your returning you'll see here whereas the by the numbers report you can see it break down day by day new customer versus returning versus this you just see you see them kind of you see them separated um so you can see obviously in the last 30 days um how many first time orders that we have if you wanted to add those up you should really don't need to there's you know the reports inside of by the numbers do that for you and then also the returning so just a different way to look at it um, but this is a really good report that i look at as well with my customers um, so if you wanted to track first time mer and mer all you would do is just add another column here so let's insert column to the right let's go uh store rev 
Let's go total store rev. Total store rev. So for that same period, I think we're at 11,000. Let's have a look. 11,000. Let's grab that. Paste. So this is going to be, we're going to change this to new customer MER. And then we can change this one to MER. And then all you're going to do, um, I'm just going to do this really quickly. Bear with me. Okay. Made a little bit of a change. So I put the new customer MER next to the new customer revenue, and then we're going to look at total store revenue and total store MER. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go I, um, so equals I three, this is three. Yep. Divided by F three. And that gives us our MER. So we're going I, which is total store revenue divided by spend total equals your overall store MER. So we're making a 13 uh, X MER for the total store revenue here. And then for new customers, we're making 1.5. So uh, I hope this has helped. Um, I'm going to get the team to link the spreadsheet um, in the comments or in the uh, description for you so that you can also have access to the sheet um, and customize it the way you want. It's just really simple to use. Um, and then you, or if you're a freelancer and your client can use this, um, I always get the clients to put in their Facebook spend and their miscellaneous spend every month if they have other spend. So clients are responsible for that. And then I just add in Google spend and their store revenue, or you can get the client to put in the store revenue, uh, whatever works best for you. But it just is a really great visual. That way you can track it, you know, uh, week over week, or you can do month over month, whatever works best for you. Uh, and keep an eye on those, that new customer MER and also the total store MER. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, sorry, I probably rambled a bit more than I needed to, but uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Thanks, everyone. Bye. We're going to dive right in. And the topic for today, the discussion topic, is going to be MER, Media Efficiency Ratio. And what MER is, Media Efficiency Ratio, is... Think of it like company ROAS. So all cash spend out on paid media versus all revenue in.